Hello everyone. Today I'll be discussing how to interpret a urinalysis, more commonly known as a UA. This topic ended up being a little bit on the long side for a single video, so I've divided it into three parts, each corresponding to a category of information obtained from the UA. By the end of part one of the short series, you should be able to list some situations that can be evaluated using the UA. You should be able to list the components of UA. And last, to be able to explain the significance of the color and turbidity. First, let me start by discussing what is a UA. A urinalysis is a commonly ordered panel of tests on a sample of urine which can evaluate a wide variety of medical problems, including kidney failure, urinary tract infections, kidney and ureteral stones, GU malignancies, acid-base disorders, abnormalities of volume status, rhabdomyolysis, and response to alkalinization therapy, which can be undertaken to improve excretion of certain drugs and toxins. Information from the UA can be divided into three distinct categories. The first is gross inspection. This includes the color of urine and its turbidity. Some might also include odor here, but this is extremely subjective and not typically reported by the lab. The second category is the so-called dipstick. This consists of a reagent strip, which is literally dipped into the urine sample, triggering a series of color changes along its length, which correspond to the presence and concentrations of specific molecules. The specific properties and constituents tested via dipstick include specific gravity, pH, glucose, heme, protein, leukocyte esterase, sometimes just called leukocytes, and nitrites. Depending upon the lab and specific reagent strip, you may also see ketones, bilirubin, and urobilinogen. The dipstick will be the focus of the second video in this series. The last category, which is usually not performed by the lab unless specifically requested, is urine microscopy. With microscopy, a lab technologist will quantify the numbers of white blood cells and red blood cells and will assess for the presence of bacteria, crystals, and something called casts. I'll be talking about microscopy in the last video, which will also include a summary of how to put all this together in order to use the UA when making diagnoses. For the remainder of this video, I'll be focusing on just the gross inspection of urine. The first characteristic to discuss is the color. You've probably noticed at some point that your own urine color varies from time to time, usually a very light yellow when you've been consuming plenty of liquids, and a very dark yellow or even an amber color at times you've been dehydrated. Outdoorsmen will frequently use the color of their urine as a rough guide of how well hydrated they are. While there is definitely a strong relationship between urine color and hydration, it can potentially be influenced by a great number of other things, such as medical conditions, medications, and even some foods. The list of things which can cause unusual colors in the urine is extremely long, and I will not read through all of them, but rather highlight the most common and or concerning. Overall, red is the color which concerns me the most, as it is most often the result of bleeding somewhere in the GU tract. The source of bleeding can be the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, or the urethra. Orange urine is most often the result of hyperbilirubinemia, in other words, any condition which leads to an elevated level of bilirubin in the blood, such as liver disease or hemolysis. The antibiotic rifampin also leads to orange urine. Brown and black urine is not common, but when it's seen, it can be the result of an unusually severe or concentrated version of orange or red urine. Green urine is also not common, but has been reported in patients with UTIs secondary to pseudomonas. There are a number of medications that lead to green urine, including methylene blue. Although methylene blue, as its name suggests, is blue, when that color mixes with naturally yellow urine, the result is green. The same holds true for ingestion of excessive amounts of blue dye, which also leads to green urine. Purple urine, which I've never personally seen, has been reported in the literature to be seen in cases of infected urinary catheters. And white urine, which I've also never personally observed, has been reported in hypercalciuria and with chyluria, 
which is leakage of lymphatic fluid into the urine, most commonly seen in the tropics due to a parasitic infection called filariasis. The turbidity of urine, that is how clear or cloudy it looks, is usually reported in very qualitative terms. Turbid urine may indicate the presence of a UTI or precipitated crystals. However, it's not a specific finding for either of those conditions. So just as with malodorous urine, you should never assume the presence or absence of a UTI based on the urine's turbidity. So that's part one of this three-part series. Part 2 will discuss the dipstick, including a demonstration as to how to actually check it. <laughs>